Hey guys, what's going on? Well, the weekend's over, and that's the end of fun and games. It's time to get back to work, and we're going to continue our beta flight series by installing DFU drivers today. Let's get to it. As we're moving through the beta flight series, we previously discussed how to download and install the beta flight software and a couple of drivers. To continue with this series, today we're going to install the DFU drivers to prepare our board to be able to flash firmware. I think there's nothing else to do other than let's look at the computer and get straight into it. With our Betaflight configurator open, we previously discussed how they give us a couple of links and make it easy to find some resources so we can be successful using this software. We previously downloaded the two basic Betaflight drivers, which I think this is worth mentioning. If you're on Windows 10, you may not even have to install these. Windows might do it for you. So if you plug in your flight controller and you get a COM port, you're okay. You shouldn't have to do anything else. But we've already talked about this. Let's move forward because today we're going to be doing the DFU driver. Betaflight does offer ZDiag, and that's a utility to help replace drivers in Windows. But it's advanced, and it can be difficult and cumbersome to use, and I don't even want to get into that. So forget about this nonsense. I have a tool that's much, much easier. Well, where can we find that? Let's take a look. I've opened my internet browser and I've navigated over to the Impulse RC download page. And this is where we find the Impulse RC driver fixer. And this is an awesome tool for installing your DFU drivers, but also making repairs to drivers if things aren't working correctly. And what I mean by that is if you're having a problem getting your Tyrannus connected, you can run this tool and it should fix the driver. If you connect your flight controller and you're having an issue even with the normal drivers, you can run this tool and it should correct the issue. But we're primarily using it for the DFU drivers because those are the ones that are much more difficult to typically install and I'm trying to make this easy. Let's click on the link and we're gonna download the file. I'm using Chrome, so by default, it's just going to start the download and go straight into my downloads folder. From here, I'm going to navigate to my downloads folder. And because I'm using Chrome, if I click on the arrow, I can just say show in folder and it's going to open that folder right up for me. And well, there's my driver fixer. As long as you know where your downloads folder is, that's all that's important. Well, actually, let me back up a little bit. What's important is that you know where you're saving your downloads, and in this case, specifically the driver fixer. So as long as you know where this is going, it's cool. If you haven't changed anything, it should go into your downloads folder by default. All right, let's make things work. I've got my driver, and now I'm gonna bounce back over to Betaflight, and I'm gonna plug in my flight controller. With my flight controller normally plugged in, I should have a COM port pop up that Betaflight detects as being the flight controller. As long as you have this, then you can connect as normal. That means that you've successfully installed the standard drivers or Windows did it for you. Either way, we're still going to be successful. Um, so flight controller is connected. I have my COM port. I'm going to click on connect. Everything's going to load just like it normally would. Now I'm going to shoot over to my CLI tab in order to put this board into bootloader mode to be able to install my drivers. And if you remember previously, we discussed a lot of different ways in order to get your board into DFU mode. You can push a button, you can solder pads together, you can short pads together, or you can use the CLI using a command. Because I just flashed Betaflight to this board, I know it's running the latest version, therefore I know my command to enter bootloader mode is BL. If you're on Betaflight version 317 and previous, you're going to be typing in DFU here. If you're unsure of what version you have, just simply type in version and hit enter 
and we can verify our version of Betaflight and also our type of flight controller. We're going to get a little bit more into this in the next video, but for now, you just want to verify that you know what version of Betaflight you're running so we can send the right command. Ugh, long explanation. Okay. I'm on 333, therefore I know my command is BL. I am going to type in BL and hit enter. It is going to cause my flight controller to reboot and I should get kicked out of my connection from Betaflight because that COM port is no longer available. Now that I'm back on my main screen of Betaflight, you're going to see I do not have a COM port available. I go manual selection, there's nothing in here, oh my goodness, what do we do? Well, this is why we're here today, and this is why we're having this conversation. We are now going to install the DFU driver using the Impulse RC driver fixer. Makes this super, super easy. I'm going to go back to my location where I have saved that driver fixer. I am going to right click on the driver fixer, and I'm going to say run as administrator. Whenever you're installing drivers, it's always a good idea to run as administrator. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. The application should open in a moment here. Our driver fixer is open. It's going to look for the board and then it's going to install the DFU driver. It could take a minute to run, but as you can see, we have successfully installed the driver. And now we have a warning saying that beta flight is open and we're going to have to reopen it in order for it to detect the board in DFU mode. I'm going to say, okay. We're done in our downloads. I'm going to close this up and now I'm going to close Betaflight. I'm going to go ahead and reopen Betaflight. Now that Betaflight has reopened, you're going to see it recognizes our board in DFU mode. Now we can go ahead and install our firmware. Generally speaking, that's how we're going to get our DFU driver in there. Now if you've entered DFU mode and you're not sure how to get out, it's really simple. All you have to do is reboot your flight controller. Unplug it, plug it back in, flight controller has rebooted. Now it's going to load up with a COM port just like it normally would. Something that's worth mentioning is every single time you connect a flight controller in DFU mode, at least initially, you are going to have to install a driver for it. So in many cases, if you have the same flight controller in more than one aircraft, you are going to have to go through this procedure and install the DFU driver for each of those flight controllers. On the other hand, once you've installed the basic drivers, that's it, and you should not have to install them again. Well, that's it for now. We've successfully installed all of our beta flight drivers. Now we should be able to connect our flight controller and move forward actually getting into flashing the firmware. Then after that, we're going to start going over all the bits and pieces in the configurator. So hopefully you're going to be successful with your installation. But that's it. I got to run. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.